let me say to everyone here, welcome to Wolf Medicine, your uh, personal power and balance and self-control for the night. And for those who may not know me, my name is Sue Storm. I've been working with totems now for, <laughs> I hate to say this, but over 50 years now. And I am also known as a totem portrait artist. I love color and I love totems. And this has led me to create a course called Totem Language Wheel, which harnesses the totems and the energy of color and where we can create magic. Now, tonight, we're actually going to be talking about the wolf. And the wolves are very different from dogs. Very, very different. They're, they're more aloof, and they're hunters, and they're full of freedom. Okay, and this is the, the wolf. Now, Native, but one of the greatest stories out there, and many of you might know it, and some might not, about wolves comes from the Cherokee Indians. And this is a story about two wolves. All right, two wolves. And this story goes like this, where the Cherokee, an old Cherokee grandfather takes his son, grandson out into the woods. And he is teaching him, you know, different herbal medicines and different things along those lines and he wanted to teach his son about life and life in general and he and he looks at his grandson and he says you know i want you to understand there is a fight going on inside me you know and this fight is between two wolves all right one wolf it is evil and he's angry he's full of envy he's full of sorrow and regret and arrogance and self-pity and guilt he lies he has a false sense of pride and superiority and ego okay that's the one wolf now he continues to tell him about the other wolf. The other wolf is good. Okay, the other wolf is good. He's full of joy and peace and love and hope and humility and kindness and empathy, generosity and truth. He's full of compassion and faith. So this this grandfather looks at his son, grandson, and says, now I want you to know this fight is going on in you too. It's not just in me. It's in you and it's in every human being out there, this fight. So the grandson is looking at his grandfather going, oh, wow. And he's thinking, he's really pondering what his grand, these words his grandfather has given him. And then, in just a brief moment, he looks at his grandfather and says, which wolf won? And the grandfather just simply smiles, sits back, and replies, the one you feed him, the one you feed is the one that wins. So the wolf can truly teach us about our own light and shadow, you know, helping us shape ourselves to the what type of person we really want to be. Now, the symbolism for wolf has meaning, it has, there's a lot of meanings. There's one that's loyalty and it's a family, it's teamwork and it's about protection and wilderness. It's freedoms and instinct. It's playfulness, all right? It brings us self-control and balance. And other noble, really noble characteristics. He's our teacher, or she's our teacher. Historically, wolves have lived throughout the world. So there is a lot of mythology 
and a lot of folklore in many cultures about the wolf, you know. And wolf medicine is a very sacred figure to many people who have a kinship to, to these remarkable creatures, all right? Wolf medicine allows us to tap into our personal power. Wolves form deep bonds with other family members in their pack, right? So uh, a, a group of wolves are, are referred to as a pack. And when, when you have a pack, they depend on each other to survive. They will put the pack first, the family first, even before their own individual interest, okay? Above anything else, wolves fall into line to form the role, all right, within their pack for which they're best suited. So here's where the alpha and the omega come in play. All wolves want their pack to thrive. So the alpha, so the alpha will, is the leader, all right? The alpha is the leader. He will delegate the pack where they're going to hunt, when they're going to rest, and even who gets the mate, okay? The female and the male alphas will never, ever, ever fight each other, okay? They won't fight each other because it's very important that their role is, is so crucial to the pack for hunting, to be able to delegate, everything there is. Now, the alpha... If the alpha and the female, alpha, the male and the female, if they get angry with each other and they don't, they're, they, they're, they want to blow up and, and have their own fight, they take it out on the omega. They'll go and find the omega and they will just beat the crap out of the omega because the omega is not allowed to fight back. That's the role the omega plays. It is just as important the omega is just as important as the alpha, all right? Now, the omega's role is also, besides being that whipping child, all right, for the, the, omega, the alphas, is to also be that caretaker for the young pups and, and also the old wolves that are still around. They'll take care of them because that's their role to take. While they're naturally friendly, wolves, and playful, wolves are a force to be reckoned with. If you ever come across where they feel threatened and their loved ones are threatened in any way, they'll, they'll just take you down. One of their greatest lessons is put family first, and put loyalty first, all right? It brings us to awareness that life's greatest gifts is our relationships, all right? How we treat people and how we are, you know, with our relationships, with those that we love is the greatest gift that we have, okay? So if you have wolf, all right, if you have wolf, you know, the wolf is going to ask you, do you put your, your family first? Do you have children? Do you protect them no matter what? And their well-being ahead of everything else? The wolf ensures that everybody in the family, including your close friends, has chosen family, is protected and taken care of. You know, you know you've heard the term, I'm sure you've heard the term, oh, a lone wolf. Well, a lone wolf is extremely rare, all right? This is more of a legend than, than anything because wolves rely on each other to survive, all right? They work as a cohesive team. They're a family. They're, they, they, they will bond together and they work as a team. They work as a unit, all right? If you're drawn to wolves, Look at the group of people that you work with or you socialize with 
or you even interact with in your community. Do you have the right team around you, right? Are they supportive? Do they inspire you to do your best, all right? And do you inspire them to do their best? We all have to learn to rely on ourselves at some, to some extent. But Wolf Medicine reminds us to create our own team if we don't already have one, all right? So sometimes the female alpha, the female alpha is also referred to as a she-wolf, okay, as an archetype, a she-wolf. Many women are givers. It's easy for us to give, all right, and fall into the trap of giving too much sometimes and not protecting or being clear of our boundaries, okay? The most certainly not, this is most certainly not the way of, a, 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 of an elf, alpha female or a she-wolf, no, all right? The term she-wolf for women is to truly, truly embrace as the description of a protective female, the alpha female. She reminds us to protect those that we love, all right? stand our ground, defend our boundaries at all costs, whether it's physical, financial, emotional, sexual, or spiritual. It doesn't matter what you think. If she feels threatened, she'll let you know, all right? Now males need, what they need to learn from a, a she-wolf and an alpha wolf is that if her hackles are up, she needs space. She needs, and that's, that's her boundaries, aren't being respected, all right? It's an opportunity for, for men to, to give protection so that she can relax some, so that she doesn't need to be always on that defense, okay? Now an alpha male, a he-wolf, or, you know, as it is, now, it is for that exerting more protectiveness, you know, for, for those that you love dear and hold. They're the leader, they're a teacher. And it's important that the alpha male has a strong mate, a very strong mate as well. Remember, family is everything to the wolf and the mates must see themselves as equal. All right. If the wolf is making himself known to you in some way, such as you're noticing him, say on social media or advertisements, or you go into a store and you see little, you know, little st statues of wolves, or you know, even a stuffed animal that's a wolf, you know, this is a sign. This is a sign that you need to calm your, t you need to calm yourself, claim your territory, and this could be claiming your power over your yourself or your situation. For example, if you're in an environment or you're, uh, whether it be personal or professional relationship, that's not allowing you to be that alpha person. In that case, it might be time for you to step up, you know, step up and be that alpha. Allow yourself to be known or heard or you go find yourself a new territory, all right? You know, that wolf spirit medicine may be telling you it's time to become a leader of your own pack or of the pack versus being an omega. However, because there are two sides of a coin, look at your behavior. Are you being too alpha? Do you need to step back? Or is it time to step up and be heard and go find your, your, your space and place? Now, there's a sense of freedom with wolves. Wolves, even though they're connected to canines, they're not dogs, they're really not. And 
do not choose ever to become man's best friend. Wolves never do. Their instinct is to run free, to be wild. This is their true nature. So ask yourself this, are you restricting yourself? May it be either physical or emotional, mental or even spiritual. Are your boundaries in place? Are, are your boundaries placed too tightly? Okay. Maybe it's time for you to take some risk and break three. You know, by holding of what you're holding back. You know? Wolf represents freedom to run free. Also, it's time to run free and explore space, whether it's on the physical or the emotional or the mental or the spiritual side. Wolves trust and follow their instincts. It's in their code of their DNA, all right? They follow that gut feeling. This comes from that natural instinct, which is still in you as well. We very much like the wolf have an instinct in us, all right? However, today's world, because we're so analytical and we're working so much with logic, more than our instincts, more than that psychic sense, we ignore our gut feelings. We ignore that if something doesn't smell right or that clear knowing, we, we ignore it because if it's not logical, we kind of push that away, all right? We push those psychic senses away. However, if you're connected to the wolf, if you're really connected to the wolf, then call in that wolf medicine. Learn to trust those psychic senses, your senses. Really learn to work with them. They, they can help us know whether or not if someone or something is um, being honest or not with us, right? If something's right for us or not. Can we, you know, it's like, can I allow this person to be part of my pack? You know, can, whether this person is, is good for the job that I'm hiring or, or is this job good for me? Or do I need to look for another one? Did you know wolves, all right? run 35 miles per hour, which is 56 kilometers per hour, all right, when they're, when they're chasing their prey. They run that fast, 35 miles per hour, 56 kilometers an hour. That's fast, all right? However, if you, if you ever have an opportunity, and believe me, it's beautiful to see. I, I, I honestly have gotten to witness this is a wolf running. When the wolf runs, they, they don't really, a lot of times they don't, it's not running. It's more of a lope. They're loping. You know, it's just going easily. And that's five miles per hour or eight kilometers per hour. And they can, they can lope, it seems like, you know, for hours on end. They're really creatures of divine elegance and if you combine that elegance with their strength and their endurance what do you have but pure grace you have pure grace wolves live in harmony with nature all around them the lesson here is where do you feel in harmony with your physical your emotional your mental and your spiritual self this is what the wolf asks you. Where do you feel in harmony? Your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual self. Do you have it in your surroundings? Do you lack strength? Do you lack stamina? Do you, do you even have grace? And why would you? And what can you change to, to be able to have these things for yourself. What is it? 
If you feel ill at, at ease in your surroundings, perhaps it's time to explore new environments, right? If you feel ease in your own body, it's worth exploring what's hindering you, your innate capacity to thrive. Wolves and human beings are designed to move, not stay stagnant. We're designed to move, all right? We function optimal when we have time to move every day. If we give ourselves time to move every day, if we start our day off with movement, such as yoga or going for a walk or things like that, or in the middle of the day, you will find yourself in, in more of awe of grace and strength that is exactly what the wolf possesses as well. Consider how you can cultivate these qualities in your own physical being, all right? Wolves are aloof and they're shy to humans. Yet their natural state is to be confident, all right? They possess that innate curiosity about the world around them. So wolf medicine is teaching you here not to let your fears and in, in, in your life's insecurities rob you, okay, from, from your natural life's curiosity. Notice the patterns of negativity or emotions that don't serve you and allow them to fall away to the wayside. Our world is full of wonder and delight. So it's about getting curious what's out there for you, all right? So wolves are extremely social. They love to play. Though they can be fierce predators, and in the evening you hear them howl towards the moon, all right? They're singing and they're communicating about their day, and the pack is in, and to the, other packs in the area saying this is my territory this is what's going on so you can just move along the lesson that the wolf brings us is no matter what is coming at us how serious and how responsible we need to be we need to set time off to the side and play and sing to the moon and dance and enjoy those around us. Now, we, we all can't be, you know, we know the saying, we can't be all work and, all, and no play, right? So it's time to bring that balance into our lives. So with that being said, I would like to share my screen and play a song for you guys if that's all right with everybody, because this is a native song that I really, I really love. It's from the Red Shadow Singers. Okay.
love the Red Shadow dancers, or singers, I should say. I really like their songs quite a bit. Um, and I, I really wanted to say that very much so. Now, what I would like to do is, is um, I'd like to take us into that meditation part of tonight. And so I'd like you just to sit back in your chairs just sit back and get yourself nice and comfortable, all right? And breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Just relax. I want you just to relax. And I want you to actually visualize, okay? Just visualize being, being in, your, in your bedroom sitting on the edge of your bed, looking out the window. And when you're there, looking out the window, you're gonna see the moon up in the sky, so bright, so full of crisp air outside with that shining light. And you're gonna look off. And you're going to see a glimpse on the ground, something shiny. And you realize it's eyes looking up at the window, inviting you to come join it. And you're like, OK. And you go outside, and you start walking. And you're walking towards the woods. And you see, finally you get to see in full figure that what, what was staring at you. And it was a, it's a wolf. It's not just any wolf. It's a she-wolf. It's this big, beautiful, silver-coated she-wolf inviting you to follow her. And you follow. And you do. You follow her. And you realize you're not walking. You're loping like the wolf. You're loping and, and moving and going as fast as she is going. And she's running in and out of the trees so quickly. Moving and moving and moving so fast. Oh. You realize that you've got all the energy in the world. You're not exhausted. You, you're, you're full of strength and vigor. You're going and going and going. Oh, oh my goodness. And now she comes to a sudden stop. And you stop, and she walks up to you. And she circles you, and she's circling you, and she's telling you, it's okay. You don't need to be afraid. I'm here for you. I'm your wolf. We're here together. We're here to make a difference. I want you to come meet the pack. So. In order to do that, you must make me a promise. The promise is, when we go over this bridge, you only go over the bridge with me, no one else. And you bring no one here. It's just you and me. And you say, OK. And she comes up and rubs against you. She puts her nose against your nose and said, follow me. And you go over this bridge to an island, this beautiful island. And on this island is your pack of all the wolves, all the different types of wolves, the Mexican wolf, the black wolf, 
the silver, the red wolf, the northern wolf, all the types of wolves there. And they're there telling you all their secrets. And they want you to sit and to listen and to be quiet because they have messages for you. Each and every one of them has a message for you. So you sit and you breathe in and you let out. You breathe in and you let out. And you allow the messages to come to you one by one. lessons just for you and what you need to do. And you breathe in and you breathe out. You're allowing the energy of the wolf realizing it, but all the wolves start running and pacing around you, almost like a vortex, running and creating speed and energy around you, and you go faster and faster, playing and howling at the moon, and they're running faster and faster, and then the next thing you know, you're back in your room. You're back sitting on the bed. Looking out the window. And seeing the eyes of that she-wolf looking back at you. Blinking, saying, Come find me when you need me again. I will be there for you. will be there for you when you need all you need to do is call so now you stretch and you wiggle your toes and your fingers and your ears and you come back to the room so that is tonight's meditation I hope you enjoyed it. Well, thank you for coming. It's starting next weekend for the next three weekends. I will be doing live on Zoom um, a class called Totem Language Wheel. And this class will be a combination of uh, Totem Language 101 and, one, and 200. So you'll be getting both classes um, and it Saturday and, and Sunday, three hours each day, um, for, for the next three weeks. If you're interested, I would love for you to join me, um, in this class and you get to learn how to work with totems and color together because when you put, and you're going to be working in, in a circle in, in, in a spiral, right? In the, in creating these wheels and by doing such, what, by putting certain co combinations together, you create certain energies. You learn how to emanate them. You know, when your emanation is, when you emanate that energy, you know, when you radiate energy out from your chakras to, to someone else, and let's say you have to, you have to go give a speech. All right. 
and you you're 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 nervous and you're you're like oh my god can i do this can i really can i teach can i can i do all this and so you emanate a blue horse all right horses are about power and they're about strength and agility and, and all of that and if blue is about communication, so if you emanate that, that blue horse, all right, you'll have strength in that, that communication because it's also about body communication, you know, tilt of the head, a little movement, everything, you're going to be able to communicate quite well, right, during that speech. So... And that's one way that you'll learn how to work with these totems with different color. Um, you know, if you need if you need to take action and you need your your people around you, your community to take action and really move, you might want to use a red ant. Red ants are 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 about action and they're militant. They work together, you know, and they go. So you're going to learn how to create a wheel where you're, you're using, you're going from one direction to the next, to the next, to the next, and building, you know, with seven totems for the, the 101. That's learning how to work with your chakras, all right, and in strengthening your chakras and moving along that way with the totems. All right. You also can learn how to work and create some uh, strength of a personal space for for your your office or your home or your family with with the the 101. And then with the 200, all right, you're going to be working with 22 totems all together. 22 totems, and they work going from your you know getting clarity to going into working in co-creation into your healing into your spiritual aspects all right and you're going to bring it into self so that is all that's going on with with that if you're interested in these class the, the, this class coming up that would you know just let me know and I will Get you the information and I promise it will be a lot of fun so other than that I would like to say thank you to my teachers and my teachers teachers and to thank all of you for coming this evening or this morning or this afternoon whichever your time zone you're in and um, May you be very blessed and have that energy around around you all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm.